Hello friends, welcome to Dennis Simplifies. In this video, we are going to reverse the factorial of a number in C++. As usual, the algorithm first and then the code. So, let's simplify. <laughs> Given a positive integer n, devise a computer solution that can be used to find another integer m whose factorial is n. For example, if n is given as 720, then m should be 6, meaning 6 factorial should give you 720. So you are doing it the opposite way rather. So let's take the algorithm. We are going to ask the user to input the value of n. So we say input n. Then we are going to set these two variables to 1. So we say fact equals 1 and m equals 1. I will explain as you go along. Now, the idea we are going to use is that since we are given a bigger number, 720, and we know factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 onwards, what we are going to do is that we are going to start from 1 and then multiply 1 by 2, 2 by 3, like that, so 1 by 2 by 3 by 4 until we get the value of n. When we get the value of n, we are going to say that if the fact is equal to the n, then it is a factorial of it else then it is not so what you're going to do is that we're going to keep multiplying 1 by 2 by 3 by 4 by 5 until we get the value of n so we say that while fact is less than n fact times equals m m plus plus n while what if while loop is going to do is exactly what i said fact is 1 so you should multiply 1 by 1 and you get 1 now you should increase m by 1 now we get 2 so when it comes back to the top, fact is 1, so fact is less than n. So it's going to multiply 1, which is fact, by m, which is now 2. So it will be 1 times 2. Then it will increase the m by 1 again. So now it becomes 1 times 2 times 3. As we visualize, we'll understand this more. So when we come to the end of the while loop, we say if fact is equal to n, then it should print that the factorial of m minus 1 is n. The reason why we have m minus 1 will also be explained, but it is that because we started m from 1, m will be 1 more than the value of the factorial. That is why we are subtracting 1 back. As we visualize, we get a, a bigger picture of this. So else, you should print that the value is incorrect and then n if. That means if you want to find the factorial of, let's say, um, if you see the value of n is 7, th there is no value to find the, the, the factorial of 7. I don't know whether if you get it, but then let's visualize it here. So let's take the value of n to be 6 and fact to be 1. So we know that fact is 1 and fact times m, which is 1, will give us fact to be 1. So 1 times 1 is still 1. So fact is equal to 1. And then we increase m by 1. So m is going to be 2 now. Now we end the while loop. Now fact is 1 and 1 is less than 6. So we multiply the fact, which is 1, by m, which is 2. So 1 times 2, we get 2. So now fact is 2. Then we increase m by 1. So m becomes 3. Then we end while. Now fact is 2. So 2 is still less than 6. So 2 times m, which is now 3, we get 6. So 2 times 3, we get 6. Then we increase m by 1 again. So we get m to be equal to 4. Then we end the loop. Now fact is 6 and n is 6 since fact is not less than n that is 6 is not less than 6 we can't enter this loop no more so we check if the fact is equal to n then it's a factorial of it so we see since fact is 6 and n is 6 then it's a factorial of it and then we can see that m is 4 and that is one more than the value we actually do we know that 3 factorial is actually 6 so when we take 1 from m you're going to get the actual value so we have m minus 1 which is 3. So the factorial of 3 is going to give us 6. Let's convert this algorithm to our code in C and see how it runs. So in the int main function, I declared n, n, m, and then fact to be integers, and then I initialize m and fact to be 1. Then I ask the user to enter the value of n, and I set the while loop which is going to count or which is going to check for the factorial. And then I set the if statement, which will check if the fact is equal to n. If it is not, then it should print that the value is incorrect. 
then I end my code. Let me input some values for n and then we see how the code works. So I entered the same value 720 and it says that 6 factorial is equal to 720. So you see why we subtracted 1 from the m. It would have been 7 factorial. So 6, 7 minus 1 gives us 6. So 6 factorial is 720. Let's input another value. Let's say 24. So you see that 4 factorial equals 24. So our code is running properly. Alright friends, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Till then, a party!